Welcome to Steve's World UK. Today we're in Bath. So to all the Americans out there, a very happy 4th of July. So today, the American Museum in Bath is part of my world. So we have a map of the museum and gardens. Never been here before, so let's take a look. So the American Museum takes you on a journey through the history of America from its early settlers to the 21st century with its remarkable collection of folk and decorative arts. The museum shows the diverse and complex nature of American traditions. So according to the guidebook, the American Museum Gardens opened to the public in 1961 the achievement of four colleagues, Dr. Dallas Pratt, John Judkin, Nick Bell Knight, and Ian McCallan, the museum's first director. I'm pretty certain this is of American origin, but it sure looks like fun when the weather's pretty hot and the water's flowing. Collecting for the museum began in earnest in 1958, facilitated by Judkins' business contacts, each piece testifying to the artistry of Americans and how these people had lived in the past. Panelling and floors were also shipped over to Britain, enabling period rooms from demolished buildings in America to be reconstructed within the spacious interiors of Claverton Manor. Many decades on, the American Museum and Gardens remains the only museum outside the United States to showcase the decorative arts of America. The commanding 1820 Manor House, home to the American Museum, is probably the third building to have had the title. The first two were located in Claverton Village. The building, designed by Geoffrey Wyatt, who had convinced the owner John Vivian to build new, and in a new location rather than restore, is made of bath stone in a neoclassical style. It also included an Italian style garden. Now we're gonna go into the house in a few minutes. So we have the lower level, the first floor, and the ground floor to look at. So the entrance to the house is at the back. So we're gonna go back through the ticket office and head into the house. Some of the famous Americans here, Muhammad Ali, Emily Dickinson, Edgar Allan Poe, Mark Twain, George Washington over in the corner, we'll see John F. Kennedy, Thomas Edison, Bruce Lee, Groucho Marx, and Abraham Lincoln, to name just a few. By an impartial jury of the state. Unlike the English Bill of Rights, the American version had a broad sweep. The freedoms of the people thus balance the authority of federal government, ensuring that the individual's inalienable right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness could be guaranteed and protected. So in this area is obviously some, uh, or a collection of some designs of decorative furniture. protecting Britain's infant vast trade monopolies. At first, there was no intention to separate from Britain. There's something very unnatural and odious in a government that found the ways off. With resentment rising, and Spence and Benjamin Franklin to draft a document declaring America's independence from Britain. Not everyone in Congress was happy with the idea, knowing that a bloody war
Civil War came with the Battle of Gettysburg. President Lincoln delivered his famous Gettysburg Address, echoing the Declaration of Independence. Four score and seven.
So I guess you can't come to the American Museum without having an American club sandwich and a latte, my hot beverage of choice. So we've just come out of the house and seen all the American artifacts, so it's now time to check out the gardens. So having finished with the house and a spot of lunch, we're heading now into the garden, where we're greeted by a figurehead of Abraham Lincoln, the 16th President of the United States. I'm still unsure what this structure is. I think it might be something particularly for the children to play with, but certainly colorful and in fitting with the surrounding landscape. So the section we're in currently is the new American garden. Plenty more statue heads. Let's take a look. I have to say I'm surprised to see Sir Winston Spencer Churchill, American mother, British father, Prime Minister from 1940 to 1945, and again from 1951 to 1955. Eleanor Roosevelt, philanthropist and civil rights activist, married to her distant cousin Franklin Delano Roosevelt, United States Delegate to the United Nations General Assembly, America's Most Distinguished First Lady. Benjamin Franklin, printer, inventor, diplomat, ambassador to France and Sweden, author of Paul Richard's Almanac, the most senior of the founding fathers. Alexander Hamilton, aide-de-camp to George Washington, co-author of the Federalist Papers, first Secretary of the Treasury, killed in a duel by Vice President Aaron Burr. So it looks like this gate is going to take us into the Mount Vernon Garden.
So this is the amphitheatre, just located at the base of the house itself. Looks like every seat's a good seat here. One final statue head is of Harriet Tubman from 1820 to 1913. Escaped slave, civil rights and suffrage activist, union spy in the Civil War and a new face on a $20 bill. Potentially. So at the bottom of the garden we come across the coach house and stables. So we come across the garden grotto endowed by Lola Stetson Haverstick in memory of her mother Iola Y. Stetson. So that's going to do it for today. Thank you for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on great future content from Steve's World UK. Until next time, be safe, be good, be kind and be careful. It takes 24 hours for the world to turn once, but only two seconds to like or subscribe to see great future content from Steve's World UK.